All right, hello my friends. Um, so, got another physics problem. Um, so I remember when I was little at least, I always kind of wanted to know, you know, if I wanted to throw something and I wanted it to land exactly right there, how long would it take to get there? How hard would I need to throw it? Bunch of things like that. That's what this problem is kind of getting into a little bit. You're doing the first steps of that. Uh, and by the end of the semester, you will be able to um, figure out exactly where a rock would land if you threw it, just like that. Okay, So we are doing the first steps for that. Um, so first things first, I always like to draw a picture to sum up what the words of the problem are saying. So I have a stone, which I'm going to draw as a box, that is being thrown straight upwards. It's being thrown straight upwards with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second. Thrown up off the top of a rooftop. Um, the rooftop is 50 meters from the ground. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's it. Okay, so for part one, part A, we want to know. Uh, the time of max height. So we want to know T max. So with this particle, I don't have a lot of room to draw, but it's going to do something like this, and then come back down. So at some time, it's going to be located at its highest height, and that's the time we're trying to get to. Okay. Now, what do we know about this point? Well, the velocity starts off going upwards. And then it's going to start coming downwards, right? You see that just from my dotted path here. First it's moving up, then it's moving down. So that means there's a brief moment where the velocity is zero. And this brief moment is exactly the highest height. Okay? So um, I can solve for V of t. V of t equals V naught minus G t. The acceleration due to gravity, right? Because we still have gravity going on and all this. I'm throwing a rock up, and then with each second, it's gaining more velocity downwards. Eventually, it gains enough that it starts coming, falling downwards. So this will look like v naught minus 9.8 t. And then I know, as I just discussed, that if I evaluate my velocity at this special time, t max, I should get zero. And now if I plug in minus 9.8 T max, I can quickly solve T max. Remember V naught is uh, 20. So this is 20 minus G T. <clears throat> so then T max equals negative 20 divided by negative 9.8. I'm just solving for T max here. And uh, we will get uh, 20 divided by 9.8, 2.04 seconds. So we just solved for the max time. Okay. So now part B says the maximum height. Maximum height uh, above the rooftop. So why don't I set my origin? Remember, origin you can put wherever you want. The origin is just the reference point for your map. Right? Um, what do, it's basically what do you want to call x equals 0. So I'm going to put my origin at the rooftop. So now, let's say I want to express the position of this thing as a function of time. Okay, In this, in this case, my um, x direction is going like this. So then x of t, uh, we'll just, I'll just write down the general equation. So this will work whenever an object is moving with constant velocity. This is a good equation. So what's my initial position? Well, my initial position, my, my stone is at the origin. So my initial position is going to be 0. My initial velocity, that's easy enough, 20t. And then we'll have minus 9.8 t squared over 2. 
So then to figure out this max height, the point of this red point up here, I just need to evaluate x at this special time of 20 of 2.04 seconds. Okay, so this is x max equals x evaluated at the max time, and then I get 20 times 2.04 minus 9.8 times 2.04 squared divided by 2 equals 20.4. So remember, I set my origin at the rooftop. And the question asked, what is the height above the rooftop? So this is already good to go. This 20.4 is the height above the rooftop. Good test. You could put the origin at the ground instead and try and solve the problem that way then you'd have to take into account this difference of 50. But I'm not going to do that. OK, part C says determine the time at which the, st the stone returns to the level of the thrower. Um, so this is a, um, so if you have any path where the starting and ending points end at the same point, um, for acceleration due to gravity anyway, um, then the time up equals the time down. Time up equals time down. Okay, but remember, the really important thing is that they are at the same height. Okay, but um, so it's already, you know it's going to be two times this value. It's going to be 4.08, but let's try and do it a little bit better of a way. So we need this point. So why don't I just find when does x of t equals 0, right? It equals 0 at two times, at time equals 0 and at this special time over here. And if what I just said is true, we should get 4.08. So x of t equals 0 equals the same thing over here. So we have 20t minus 9.8t squared over 2 can factor out a t, or you can do a quadratic equation from this if, if that uh, makes more sense to you. 20 minus 9.8 t over 2. So t can either be equal to 0, time t equals 0 will make this equation true, or time equals 2 times 9.8 divided by 20. Right, because if you plug in this time into here, this entire side will also be zero. So this is another time that gives us x equals zero. And this is 4.08 seconds. Two times um, my height up, right here. Okay, and then finally part D says, uh, the velocity of the stone when it hits the ground. Um, so I think the best way to do this um, would be, we have this equation, vf squared minus v naught squared equals 2a delta x. Okay, so vf squared is what I'm after. And it's going to equal v naught squared. And so this equation is really nice. I mean, it doesn't deal with the time at all. And it's just kind of, we can just plug in differences here. So I can say my VF squared equals 20 squared, my initial velocity, plus 2 times negative 9.8. That's my acceleration. And then my delta X is my final position, which is negative 50, minus my initial position, which is 0. Um, so go through with this equation, taking the square root, you will get VF equals, so I get 20 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times 50, and then I take the square root of that, and I get 37.1 meters per second. Okay. Um, so these problems, um, 
although they might seem a little uh, hard to keep track of and hard to follow sometimes, we're really just using our kinematics equations in clever ways. And I could solve each one of these problems with an alternate method. There are lots of ways you can do these. Sorry, lots of ways you can do these problems. Um, these are the ways that make the most sense to me.